Hello, my name is Bill Bielek. I manage Nakamoto Forestry in North America, uh, located in Portland, Oregon in the US. And the Japan Wood Products Export Association has asked us to uh, make an introduction and uh, with background on what yakisugi, also called shosugiban siding uh, from Western Japan is. So the Nakamoto family is the largest a mill in Japan for exterior siding. Uh, we specialize in sugi and hinoki uh, exterior siding. And we're also uh, the largest mill in Japan in the world of uh, yakisugi, shosugiban, uh, which is heat treated uh, sugi siding uh, by a traditional process. And we've got about a two thirds market share in Japan, uh, probably about 50% worldwide. So what is yakisugi? Uh, yakisugi is, uh, the word in Japanese means burned cypress. Uh, and cypress is the uh, sugi species, uh, Cryptomeria japonica. It is also called Japanese cedar, colloquially. Uh, and it is, uh, in, in Western Japan, it is burned uh, at a high temperature, short duration, uh, um, uh, traditional process. Uh, that burns off the hemicellulose uh, uh, on the wood surface. And uh, hemicellulose is what uh, bugs metabolize and it's what fungus grows on. So it extends the life uh, span of the siding. Uh, also, uh, it develops a soot layer on the wood, which is hydrophobic, it repels water. Uh, also, uh, a soot layer is, it has a higher temperature of combustion. Uh, so it, it does not catch fire very readily. Uh, it is a vernacular building material, which means it, uh, there's very little uh, data in the written record on when it started to be uh, manufactured and used uh, in Japan. So the best indications we have is that it's a, at least a couple of hundred years old and that it came from uh, boat building uh, technology along the Seto S. ETO, the Seto Inland Sea in Southwest Japan. And uh, uh, it is this uh, fantastic siding material that has been discovered in the West uh, um, the, the past 15 years, mainly through uh, the activities of uh, Professor uh, Fujimori, Fujimori Teranobu, uh, who manages the Tokyo uh, Historical Museum uh, in central Tokyo. Often in the West, we hear the term wabi-sabi uh, to describe a Japanese traditional aesthetic. And uh, in Japan, it's never used in combination. It's always wabi uh, or sabi. Uh, wabi means the Japanese uh, traditional aesthetic. Uh, wa means Japan and bi means beauty. Uh, and sabi is, uh, it means patina or rust. So the wabi-sabi term used in English uh, indicates the Japanese patina aesthetic. Every region of Japan has a traditional uh, siding aesthetic. Some regions are mostly stucco siding. Uh, some regions are mostly wood siding and, and uh, a lot of regions are a combination with mostly wood, some stucco or mostly stucco, some wood. Uh, it's, it's, uh, there's an interesting pattern uh, throughout the country. Uh, in Eastern and Northern Japan, most wood siding is sugi that uh, is uh, kiln dried and it's not heat treated by the yakisugi process. Uh, but in Western Japan, uh, yakisugi is dominant in uh, historical neighborhoods. And you can recognize it because of the modeled appearance. It is generally not oiled on historical buildings. And so it turns uh, gray towards the bottoms of the walls and on north elevations and on south uh, and southeast elevations, it turns a reddish uh, brown from uh, UV uh, uh, mellowing. Nowadays, 
yakisugi is generally oiled. Most of the wood we ship in Japan and in the West uh, has an oil finish applied. Uh, there are three reasons that we apply an oil finish. Uh, one is uh, to get the color the designer's after. Another is uh, to have the color last longer. And the third reason is to glue in the soot layer on the uh, heat treated siding. Uh, but uh, the basic premise of Yakisugi is that uh, the heat treatment negates uh, the necessity of an oil finish uh, and it's designed not to need any maintenance. So it's often used on house siding and fencing. Uh, traditional houses in Japan will often have a garden uh, courtyard uh, that's surrounded by a fence. Uh, the fence can be made from stucco, concrete block, or wood. Uh, in southwest Japan, wood is very common. Uh, the, uh, the aesthetic of uh, black or darkened siding originates uh, after the Meiji Restoration when Japan opened up to the west uh, about 150 years ago uh, in, eight, in the 1860s. Uh, a bunch of architects, um, um, anthropologists traveled all over Japan just sucking up information. Uh, it was this giant unknown uh, land uh, in the world. Uh, and when it opened up, um, the Yakisugi um, aesthetic was discovered. Um, and uh, especially after the Philadelphia World's Fair in the 1870s, uh, there was a Japan house that had uh, yakisugi on it. And that's where the monolithic black exterior siding aesthetic started in the West. Uh, today, uh, yakisugi is used just like other uh, wood siding products in the West. Um, it's installed with the same uh, carpentry techniques as uh, regular red cedar or southern pine white cedar siding. Uh, it does not take a specific experience skill set uh, to this product. It's wood just like any other. It's becoming more and more popular. Uh, the colors and the oil formulas that we're uh, uh, using in the West are a little different from in Japan. We're using slow drying uh, oil finishes. Uh, black is by far the most common color. Uh, browns are also common. Uh, grays are as well. Uh, gray has never been used in Japan as an oil finish on yakisugi, but it's actually pretty common in North America. So uh, yakisugi is made by a traditional millwork process uh, that is very defined. Um, it's not so easy to do uh, because exterior siding must be um, uh, made in long skinny sticks in order to uh, be installed quickly and straight. Uh, um, uh, additionally, the, the uh, millwork parameters are dictated by exterior exposure. Uh, the wood can't be kiln dried. Um, it, it has to be milled by a, a specific resaw pattern. It cannot be random resaw pattern. It can't be uh, um, other species such as pine or larch um, that are too brittle. Uh, dug fur that is not porous enough. Uh, there are all these rules that we are required to follow. And if we don't follow these rules, then uh, uh, the result is claims. Uh, so we figured all this out over um, in Japan over generations and generations of millwork. Uh, but the Nakamoto family has, um, we've just done testing for decades. Uh, and uh, what we find uh, in every test is that the traditional millwork parameters are there for a reason, um, whether it's wood checking or uh, um, uh, porosity so that the siding dries out quickly or um, the, the uh, millwork pattern and the uh, kiln drying or the, or the air drying uh, parameter uh, makes the wood more stable in exterior exposure. So that's why we've continued with the traditional products instead of uh, using engineered products. Sugi, uh, the sugi, the Japanese cedar, Japanese cypress species, uh, has been cultivated for hundreds of years in Japan uh, since the medieval period. Uh, all, all throughout Japan, 
and especially in uh, along um, on Honshu, uh, the main island in Japan, where the Nakamoto family has uh, timberland, uh, and it's it's uh, there are many different variants of sugi. Uh, we uh, plant the variant that is optimum for exterior siding and heat treatment. Uh, so the trees grow quickly. Uh, they have a defined uh, 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 growth ring pattern, uh, um, uh, as few loose knots as possible. Uh, um, and it's a, a structural uh, uh, log so that it has a low deflection and it's useful for uh, construction grade as opposed to, say, a boat building uh, species of uh, sugi. So why use sugi? Uh, we see a lot of um, mills in the West that don't have access to sugi, or maybe they're uh, um, trying to meet a lower price point, or, or maybe they specialize in another species and are trying to adapt the Japanese process to it. Uh, what we find is um, a lot of species are too dense to dry out quickly. Um, it also helps um, for exterior siding to have a tannic acid content. And that's why uh, cedar cypress and redwood uh, are the predominant exterior siding species used in North America. Um, also with sugi, what we find is that the, the late wood growth rings are very hard. Um, as a, um, and the, the, the early wood growth rings are very soft and porous. Uh, and that results in a thick soot layer when we burn the wood. Uh, so the late wood growth rings uh, uh, they're very hard and uh, they result in a soot layer that doesn't erode qu uh, quickly. Uh, if, if we use uh, pine or uh, red cedar, uh, white cedar, uh, those species, the soot layer will erode off almost immediately um, um, just because the uh, lightwood growth rings are too thin and uh, delicate. Uh, additionally, a sugi has a lot of color variation. And uh, when we brush the soot off, uh, it exposes the uh, color of the wood, uh, heartwood and sapwood. Uh, heartwood is a reddish brown, a variety of dark to light to reddish brown. And the sapwood is blonde, uh, blondish to yellowish. Uh, and uh, it's just a beautiful wood um, when we uh, brush off the soot. And also over time, as the siding is exposed to weather, over uh, 50 or 60 years, that soot layer will uh, simply erode off. It's like a consumable surface, a protective consumable surface. And uh, so after 50 years, uh, it's just fabulously beautiful uh, because of the color of the, the wood species. Uh, it's also a very ethical uh, wood species uh, to use. Um, it's fast growing. Uh, um, it's a, a highly regulated species so that um, uh, we're, we're PEFC certified. It's similar to the American uh, FSC certification uh, and it, uh, um, it covers uh, um, uh, social issues, uh, watershed protection, and it's a chain of custody um, certification. So in Japan, that's less important. Uh, because it's a, it's a, um, most of the timberland in Japan is ethically managed and harvested. Uh, but uh, the pines and larches are too brittle. Uh, the the uh, red cedars and uh, yellow cedars and white cedars uh, in North America, the soot layer erodes off too quickly. Um, uh, we've, we've just had all kinds of problems with other species, and so we've chosen not to reinvent the wheel. So uh, most foreigners have this conception of Japan as a resource poor, uh, overpopulated country, uh, giant cities, metropolises. Um, most people go to Tokyo and Kyoto and they don't get out of those cities. Uh, but actually, um, because it's a volcanic mountainous country, it's mostly, uh, it, I think the statistic is 40% uh, mountains with a grade over 15% uh, 15, 15 grade. And uh, what that means is it's forested. So the population is concentrated along the oceans. Uh, most of the country is timberland. 
and um, they have a huge uh, um, timber production industry. Uh, but uh, because uh, the Japanese population has the highest per capita consumption of wood in the world, uh, they are a net importer of lumber, and uh, uh, the Japanese uh, um, um, importers have been purchasing huge volumes of wood uh, everywhere in the world over the last several decades um, because they're a net importer of lumber. So uh, what are the characteristics of yakisugi, also called shosugiban? Uh, it is, uh, it, it's uh, made from, exclusively from sugi. Uh, it's a holistically manufactured material, which means we have to follow rules um, all the way from log selection to millwork, uh, to the drying protocols, to the heat treatment, uh, to how it's brushed and how it's finished afterwards. Uh, a lot of the millwork is uh, counterintuitive and different. Uh, from regular siding millwork, uh, simply due to the, the Japanese heat treatment process, which is a high temperature process. Uh, everywhere in the world there is uh, some kind of traditional wood heat treatment. Um, uh, humans have uh, burned wood and heat treated wood since before history, whether it is uh, uh, spear tips or uh, fence posts or siding. It's just, uh, it's kind of a universal um, uh, technology. And the, um, the Japanese technology is optimized for a thin plank uh, siding application. High temperature, uh, short duration, so it's about 1800 degrees Fahrenheit for uh, uh, three to five minutes uh, to burn off the hemicellulose in the wood. It also makes the planks more dimensionally stable. Uh, so they stay up on the structure um, for decades and decades uh, straight without uh, cupping, twisting, warping, uh, crooking, crowning. And uh, um, also the, uh, the heat treatment case hardens the surface. Uh, so oxygen does not penetrate as quickly. Uh, so it burns slowly. Uh, and in combination with a soot layer, if we leave the soot layer on the wood, in combination with a, a case hardening, it actually uh, creates a, a class one uh, um, product uh, by ASTM E84 flame spread characteristics parameters. And um, one important point is that due to the manufacturing protocols, it is a high temperature thin plank uh, um, process by nature. We can't do it on thick stock material. We can't do it on any thickness above about 5 8 inch. Uh, if we try to burn a piece of wood over 5 8 inch in thickness, uh, the boards move dramatically because of moisture content uh, difference, uh, surface to uh, um, center on, on the piece of wood. And it, it, so we can't, unfortunately, use it for uh, uh, four quarters, six quarters, eight quarters, or beams. Um, if you burn anything, it'll, of course, uh, help with the surface uh, characteristics, durability, and what have you. But um, um, we're talking about manufacturing a claim-free material that will last uh, at least 100 years without any maintenance. And so this is a very narrow, defined uh, uh, um, knife edge that we have to um, uh, um, walk in order to, to get a good product for our customers. So fire resistance is an interesting subject. Uh, and as mentioned earlier, uh, the, the soot layer on yakisugi is, uh, uh, has a higher temperature of combustion than non-heat treated wood. Uh, so it's about 200 degrees higher than uh, regular KD siding. And so what we've actually seen in the field in California is that the siding doesn't catch fire. And we do not need to apply fire retardants uh, to get class A or class B uh, um, fire resistance. And, and so, uh, which is this, it's a huge breakthrough um, for using wood. Uh, wood is losing out to cement board and stucco uh, in a lot of the higher fire zones in the West. 
Uh, so the Yakisugi is this fantastic material that achieves uh, not only the fire resistance, but um, the, the um, uh, sustainability parameters. Uh, wood is so much more sustainable than any kind of cement-based material in terms of carbon footprint. Uh, it's also fabulously beautiful, so we're able to offer that um, to the exterior siding uh, um, industry in uh, the high fire zones. Uh, additionally, for interior applications, uh, um, hospitality um, or uh, institutional projects, uh, retail, where there is high occupancy uh, for interior, we can offer a Class A material. material uh, and it, um, uh, so it's pretty common actually for interior applications as well. The manufacturing process is easily uh, understood with this image. Um, so we have this on our website just to, so that people can wrap their brain around it. But uh, 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 we start with sugi. Uh, the sugi species is it's just regular sugi wood. Uh, then we burn it into what we call a suyaki, a pure charred material. And then after it is burned, we can use it as is or brush it. Uh, to make what we call a gendai. Uh, in Japan, it's called brushed or arai, uh, where the soot layer, most of the soot is brushed off to make it a, just a little more user-friendly and less exotic, uh, less delicate surface. And then uh, it can be brushed again uh, with wire brushes, a rigorous wire brushing process, and that um, exposes the wood grain. So it just is this fabulous, beautiful material that still retains the uh, case-hardened surface. Uh, so it is a, a, a bug and fungi resistant, uh, um, fire resistant, um, at the same time that um, the sugi color and grain is exposed. Nowadays, a lot of what we see is yakisugi being used on modern structures uh, that are uh, just kind of cold, uh, made with engineered materials, a lot of glazing, uh, cement products, uh, metal, uh, and just to warm up the structure, uh, a lot of designers need something, and wood is often a, a, a solution for that. Uh, additionally, what we see on large uh, projects, uh, commercial projects, is that uh, uh, wood siding is a cost-cutting measure. When the architects are engineering their budget, uh, they go to our siding uh, because it can be half to a third of what a, a, um, an engineered material will be. Uh, our products are in the uh, 8 to $12 a square foot range, and uh, most of uh, the cladding materials used on commercial projects are much higher than that, maybe 15 to $30 range. Uh, so it ends up being a cost-cutting measure, which is pretty interesting. Uh, we see it used on institutional applications, uh, uh, um, retail, hospitality, uh, mixed-use, apartment complexes. We see it used on uh, museums, uh, nature centers. Uh, this is the Audubon Nature Center in Philadelphia. Uh, it uh, ties uh, the, the modern design into the surrounding li landscape uh, a lot of the time, uh, and that's why architects will spec it in. It's often used on apartment complexes, uh, mixed-use buildings with shops on the first floor, uh, residences upstairs. We also see uh, our product used on uh, interiors uh, for uh, high-end restaurants, uh, small and large, a lot of bars, lots of sushi restaurants throughout North America. However, uh, our market is mostly residential exterior. Uh, that is the pro predominant application of yakisugi, uh, not only in Japan, but in the West as well. Uh, it is it's, it's, it is a fantastic material for uh, residential applications. Uh, commercial needs, especially institutional, are often very uh, demanding uh, in terms of warranty, color durability, 
Uh, but for residential, uh, we're shipping to homes that uh, they're, cust they're all custom homes, uh, owners dream homes, uh, and people want, they've saved up their entire lives uh, to build something beautiful. And when they do it, uh, they want to, they want to surround themselves with something beautiful and not just, not just cement board or brick or uh, painted wood. We see projects all over uh, North America. Uh, Canadian market is actually better for us than the American market per capita, believe it or not. Uh, this specific project is in Colorado. Uh, the suburbs around the big cities, whether it's Seattle or uh, New York, Washington, DC, uh, Austin, Texas, LA, San Francisco, uh, these are the big markets. Um, this specific project is a, um, uh, an institutional project on the Hudson, just north of New York City. Some of the projects we're shipping to are more traditional. This is a timber frame house uh, up in Idaho. I mentioned it earlier, but uh, Yakisugi is installed the same way as uh, any kind of wood siding. It does not take uh, experience. It just takes conscientiousness. Uh, so our, uh, our guidance when people ask us for referrals is just work with a contractor that you have a relationship with uh, and you trust, uh, and they'll, they'll do a great job. They'll probably be excited about using our product. And if they're not, um, um, have them call us or, or uh, um, call the mill um, if the wood isn't from us. And uh, it's, it's wood just like any other. Uh, they they uh, really have nothing to be concerned about. Japan has had fabulous design and construction for hundreds of years. It has one of the most developed uh, carpentry skill sets uh, and woodworking skill sets in the world. And uh, Yakisugi is part of that. It's not only design, it's uh, wood. Uh, Japan has this fantastic uh, millwork knowledge base and uh, we're, we're pretty excited to share it with the world. Additionally, as mentioned earlier, uh, wood is just so superior in terms of uh, sustainability metrics and um, uh, controlling global warming. Uh, we really uh, see an ethical drive uh, um, um, as part of our uh, uh, career function. Uh, the Nakamoto family has been focused on ethical timberland management for about a hundred years. And in the modern world, it's just becoming more and more critical. So we see uh, wood as, as uh, the ethical choice. And uh, that really guides um, most of the decisions we make. Uh, there is not only the, uh, the beauty of the material, uh, but the uh, sustainability metrics.